Welcome to Simulator Adventures and welcome back to Train Simulator. Today we're having a look at the Tohoku High Speed Rail and Mainline route from Just Trains. This has finally brought the Japanese bullet train to Train Simulator and I cannot wait to jump right in. So let's get going. Now the High Speed Rail uh, Shinkansen line that's included in this route is 175 kilometers uh, long and it runs from Kitakami to Morioka, which is in the north of Japan. We're going to open the doors, so um, and as I talk and people board, we will um, get ready to set off. So, it's been such a long time since Train Simulator was released, but this, I believe is the very first properly modelled uh, Shinkansen bullet train line um, of Japan in Train Simulator. I'll leave a link to this uh, DLC down in the description below. I think it costs about £27, something like that. So it's not too expensive. And it also comes with a slower main line, which is about 50 kilometers long, including two trains. Uh, this one, the E5 Shinkansen, um, and the 701 series electric multiple unit, which is another Japanese train. Inside, we've got a fully modeled interior. What was that noise? Oh, this is so cool in here, though. I've right, got a fully modeled cabin, passenger cabin. You can go around and look around, which looks really nice. We'll look at this and talk a bit about it more later, but right now, let's set up the train. So, cab light. Oh, first of all, master key on. Then cab light, which is there. Um, the uh, the pantograph on. VCB. You hold that. I think it should work. I maybe need to wait for the pantograph to go up. You hold that. Maybe. Move the brake and then do that. There you go. Remove the brake and then hold the VCB down, and we're getting rid of the braking. Setting up the train, put the uh, reverse to forward, let's put the brake on a little bit so we don't roll forward while we're in the platform. Um, I'm kind of getting used to all these controls, ATC confirm, yeah, we're not to do that. And yeah, it's going to be really, really cool. So yeah, we're driving in the north part of Japan in the Tohoku region. Um, we're going between, well today we're starting in Sendai, and then we're going up to Morioka which will be cool. So here we go. Let's get going. Oh, here we go. Finally, we're driving a bullet train in Train Simulator. It's been such a long time since I wanted this. I've got, you know, in the last few months we've had the Euro tunnels come to Train Sim, and now finally we've got a bullet train. My prayers have been answered. Look at this. Yes. That is so cool. And this is Sendai, which is quite, well, a fairly big city. Nothing like Tokyo, of course. Um... It'd be cool if we got a Tokyo Shinkansen route um, in the game, which would be even better. So yeah, a little bit of info about the E5. So this is one of the newest bullet trains uh, in Japan. It was uh, first operated in 2011, and it can go up to 320 kilometers per hour on this line, which is really, really fast. The Shinkansen was, of course, launched in the 1960s in preparation for the uh, 1964 Tokyo Olympics and uh, basically after World War II they wanted to build high-speed rail and they literally just blitzed through the mountainsides, carved tunnels, built viaducts to make the straightest possible line um, so you could get the highest possible speeds and now I mean these bullet trains compete with airliners for speed to get people across Japan and I've been lucky enough to go to Japan a few times and if you're ever in Japan the bullet train is one of the most important things you've got to see while you're there. It's so cool. It is literally in here like being in an airliner. But yeah, this interior is nicely modelled. They all feel like this. It's kind of like wood grain and these dark seats. Uh, you've got information board up there. I've never been on the um, in the, the driver's cabin, but uh, yeah, it, it really is nice in here. And the cab light is sort of helping. It's not very bright. Have we got a different view? Oh yeah, we can sit here, which is cool. So the trains kind of lean around the corner, so we'll see that quite a bit later, but this journey should take about 45 minutes. But yeah, this, um, this DLC from Just Trains was released about um, in November 2020, and there's been almost no real um, reaction to it. There's been very few videos, very little info about uh, on it about um, on it on the internet that I've seen so uh, hopefully this video and others that come in the future will give it more exposure because I really think people should be getting on and playing this 
Look how cool this is. Oh, yes. That is so cool. So I think this down here is the main line, the slower main line that you can drive on. If we look at the map, yeah, you can see there's another line that goes next to this. Actually, no, it's not. This is the line. This is the other bit of the line that you get with the pack. Okay, so we're coming up to a 320 km per hour B limit. Entering into the Japanese countryside now. Just trains make, do make very good routes. And compared to the um, some of the Dovetail Games routes, I think this is at least up there, isn't it? Right, max power. Let's get to 320 km per hour. Here we go. There's our driver. His face seems to sort of follow the camera. You see that? That's weird. That's really weird. Like the Mona Lisa. Oh yeah, here we go. So optimization isn't going to be fantastic. We are going to be on a very high speed route and a detailed route. Um, this game is showing its age now. I've said this many times before. And it just cannot handle so many assets in one place. Even though we've got 64-bit uh, now, it's still not fantastic. But here we go. This is going to be the fastest journey or fastest train you've ever seen in this game, probably. Apart from the jet-powered train that's like a weird mod. Here we go. So yeah, both trains have detailed interiors. Um, in the future, I will try out the 701 series, which is like a commuter train. I'm looking forward to that as well. But really, the, the main pull for this series, uh, the main pull for this DLC, sorry, is driving the bullet train. I will absolutely love doing this. Here we go, as you can see, cutting through the mountain here, or the hill. We're not going round, we're going straight through. Because that way we can get quick travel. Put the lights on. Oh, this is epic. This is so epic. Workshop, what does that say? I don't know. Pretty long tunnel, actually. Pretty long tunnel. We're coming up to uh, 315, 320 kilometers per hour now. Oh. So there's a constant speed button, which is B, which I've just turned on. I don't know if, I don't really know what that does. If we put it on now. I don't know, we'll just leave it at P5. The train um, doesn't allow you to speed, so if we just kind of go a little bit lower, hopefully we will maintain a constant speed of just under 320. There you go. So we've got some info down here. This is like the clock and the calendar. The speed, I don't know. Oh yeah, it's on. Maintain constant speed. It does like this and then kind of <laughs> turns on and off the power so we're maintaining that constant speed, which is a bit weird. Um, is the information about all the cars we've got? I guess we've got 10 cars today. Um, I think we do. I don't know. Um, I don't read any Japanese, unfortunately. I can speak a little bit, but I can't read any. Um, this is pretty interesting. Look at this. Anyway, let's have a look at the route schedule today. So, we're going to Furukawa. Furukawa, Ichinoseki, and Kitakami. And they were picking people up from Morioka. Which is in 150 kilometers. So you can see that today we are going to be on a very long journey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think there is about ten. Wow. This is going to be quick. So yeah, the route really does look very beautiful. There's lots of different scenarios in a different like winter. Uh, summer scenarios which really do change the look of the route. Just Trains have made some brilliant scenarios um, for their routes in the past and I really do recommend them if you're looking for something a bit different. They do have some quite varied and interesting routes and they're still releasing content um, in 2022 for Train Simulator. So really Dovetail Games and Just Trains have been um, con continually adding to the roster of routes you can use in this game, which is good. The seat's perhaps not very high quality, but, you know, 
the novelty of having just a bullet train in this game really will not wear thin for me very quickly because it's just so cool, I'm so happy. And they've done a really good job with like the Japanese style trees. Very Japanesey looking trees. Lots of custom buildings. Okay, here we go, we came up to a corner. So yeah, quite a bit of G-force around these corners. Whoops. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll get, once we get closer to the cities, we'll, we'll have a bit of sort of a cityscape to see over. Now I played the, uh, I think it was called the Valley Corridor route a few years ago, which is quite similar. And it was kind of like a, a combination of British and Japanese-y sort of style, which I thought was cool. Um, it it kind of reminded me a lot of like the HS2 <laughs> rail project we have in Britain at the moment. Um, because Britain doesn't really have any high-speed rail uh, as of the moment, only in the south. And Japan is obviously miles ahead of us in terms of high-speed rail. Yeah, it was a Valley Corridor route. I did that again in 2019. And that's a fun route that Just Trains, I believe, made as well. We're going to turn off the um, speed hold and just do it manually. There we go. There's even, like, Japanese cars driving along the road. Kai cars. Look at that. It's like a, um, look at that. Oh, so cool. With the number plate and everything, really nicely detailed. And of course, in Train Sim in the past, we have had commuter rail, sort of slow lines. Um, here we go for a city. We've had commuter lines through, um, like slow lines in the kind of um, built up areas, but never a Shinkansen. Which is so cool that we finally got it now. But look at this. This is um, Furukawa. But I guess it's sort of a big town. Lots of custom buildings. Very. It's very well done, I think. I haven't been to this region, but it is definitely reminiscent of other places I've seen in Japan. It looks really good. It's, it's great. So, I mean. You don't get much opportunity to see uh, much of the landscape when you're in, in a bullet train because it's just so fast. Anyway, here's the back. Have we got a driver at the back? Yep. Got a driver at the back as well. This is the coupling bit. I don't actually know how you activate this, but you can see that the coupler kind of opens up sort of like a... I don't know, it's like it like sort of hatches and then the coupler can be um, interacted with. Um, and yeah, pretty. it's pretty simple controls in here. We've just got three controls. Um, n not an amazing view out, but as somebody said on the last video I did on Train Sim about the uh, Euro Tunnel, the reason that they don't have very wide windows is so the drivers don't get um, hypnotized by the lights flashing past them in tunnels, which makes sense. Okay, we are bearing down on Ichinoseki, main down. But uh, Morioka platform is still 120, 123 kilometers away, which is insane. We're going to be here for a while. So yeah, if there's a train sim route you want me to play, please let me know. I'm looking for new routes. I will be playing more of this in the future. And if you enjoy it, let me know um, and I will do some more. I'll definitely do at least one more video on this route where I will try the slow main line, um, which is in the north of this route. But yeah, I mean, I've been on a couple of bullet trains from like Tokyo to Kyoto, Tokyo to Nagoya, and um, the only difficult thing is, is is that they really do keep a very rigid schedule. So if you've got lots of like luggage to get on, they will be a bit annoyed if they if you hold up the train trying to get all your luggage on. Um, I was part of a massive group and we were getting on the train and we held up the train for quite a bit. And then the driver was like really keeping up the sch schedule by going a little bit fast on the next bit, or at least it felt like that. What it felt like that, it maybe wasn't, but um, yeah, they, they they love to run a tight ship. They love to run a tight schedule in Japan, and um, it really does put 
a lot of other countries to shame. <laughs> um, how disorganised and untimely our trains are, especially in Britain. Amazing. And this kind of livery, this JR livery, I, I think it's quite cool. Um, of course, the white and blue livery is probably more iconic. Um, if you're in the UK, uh, you can see an original bullet train in the York Railway Museum, which I'd recommend you go to see. And I think it may be the only Shinkansen on um, display outside of Japan. I may be wrong there. I think it is. Um, and really all those trains moved train design on so far, so quickly. Um, every, every country was trying to copy it. But no country really had the guts to just sort of literally knock down buildings and mountains to build their trains. That they're straight train lines. Look, there's another train there. That's why I'd honk at him. Not, not the kind of horn I was expecting, to be honest. I don't think I've ever heard a horn on a Japanese train, actually, in real life, so... Right now... We are out into the countryside again. We're not surrounded by forest, and you can see that the detail perhaps isn't amazing. There's kind of fog obscuring the distance over there. But, you know, it's early morning, so it could be realistic kind of fog. Um, but here you get a real sense of scale of what they've built to make this train line as fast as it possibly can be. We're just on a continuous viaduct on this journey. Right, how far are we now? 106. You see, we're getting there quick. We are getting there quick. We're expected at the next place at... Uh, 16 seconds past 9 and we'll be there about 30 seconds late which isn't too bad okay we're going up a bit of a hill now what does that mean so I, I don't you see I wouldn't know whatever it is it's off oh hang on Cruise control on. Oh. There you go, cruise control at 318. So let's sit here at, and look out the window. Oh, look at this. This is cool. Seat 5, and we're at the A window seat. And then there's only two seats on that side, but three this side. Which is interesting. You've got like a tray table. It, it is so like a train in here. It's crazy. Let's use this for the cruise control. It's a much better system. There you go. Well, it's a weird throttle handle, isn't it? It's like a sort of a, a cane almost. Look at that. It's weird. So we're using some power. We're at the top of a hill now, so... Oh, cherry blossom. Oh, amazing. I wish you could see outside when you go into a tunnel. It forces you always to go back in. So, yeah, what I'd like to see uh, um, is some more of the Honshu um, Shinkansen lines. Perhaps Just Trains will now create some more. Um, unfortunately, you know, they're not going to create a new route similar to one they've already made unless that one was really popular and there, there are just a handful of videos on this route online or, or at least on YouTube so that really does upset me you know I, I, I've wanted this for years and years and years really since the original Microsoft train simulator and um, I really do hope that uh, this will get more exposure in the future because well I mean, maybe it's the fact that, um, I'm sorry, I think you just turned on the train. Maybe it's the fact that, you know, um, this game is not that popular anymore. Train Sim World and other train simulators perhaps have taken over slightly. 
Um, and here we are in Ichinoseki, which is sort of another small town. We've got good timeliness there. We're going to be early for the next bit, which is great. We're back on schedule. Nice looking river. We must be heading towards a massive mountain here. Look at this. And if you remember the valley corridor route, um, some people might not be watching my channel when that video is released, but um, I'm sure you can find it afterwards. The valley corridor route, we didn't go through hardly any tunnels. It was just going round and round this massive valley. The train line was like up against one of the valley edges. We just went round the river valley um, all the way. It was, it was a very beautiful route, but it took probably three times as long as it would have if we just went straight through the mountain. Anyway, here we go. Yep, we're going straight through. Well, goodbye world. I'll see you on the other side. Here we go. Oh yes. You gotta love tunnels in this game. Apart from the fact that in the distance the map doesn't load, so that you get this kind of impression that the tunnel ends there, but it actually doesn't, it's just loading. That kind of sucks, let's be honest. That really lets it down. Um, and especially when I played the Euro Tunnel route, that really broke the immersion. Now, I might have talked about this before, but there's a game in Japan called Densha De Go, which means let's go by train, I think. And it's a train simulator, and they actually have arcade machines in like arcades that you can use um, to play on that. There's also like PlayStation games for it. And it is really detailed, but it's perhaps a little bit more casual than this, apart from, apart from one part of the game where it um, forces you to park within sort of like centimetres of an exact parking zone. Because some stations in Japan have like barriers to stop people jumping on the tracks or accidents happening when people fall onto the tracks. So you have to line up exactly with the doors. I don't think that's the same with um, Shinkansen trains. It's more about the like underground trains. But um, they do have like exact like lines on the floor of the platform where passengers will line up and then the doors will match them exactly just to make boarding a bit more efficient and simple for people. Um, a sort of a real example of Japanese efficiency there. And you have to, in this game, you have to park up exactly within a certain zone, otherwise you will possibly fail the mission. Um, be a Densha Dego if you're in a Japanese arcade, or maybe you're looking for a PlayStation game to import or whatever. Um, that's a fun little simulator game that not many people in the West really know about. And simulators, you know, it's like... PC gaming is not huge in Japan, so there's a lot of simulators on PlayStations uh, there, and even Nintendo actually, which is cool, but we don't get many of these games in the UK, which is a shame. I tried playing a bus simulator, which is very similar to Densha Dego. In fact, it may have been by the same company, but um, my lack of Japanese reading ability really let me down. I was struggling with the menus. Um, with the like directions. So yeah. That's cool. Um, but maybe in the future if I try and improve my Japanese reading ability we can play some Japanese uh, simulator games. That'd be cool. So right, 20, nearly 25 minutes into the video and we've still got 70 kilometers to go. So we're definitely getting there. But this will be a long journey. I wanted to show it in full. And I hope you're enjoying it if you're still watching this far. If you are still watching this far, make sure to join my Discord server. There's a link to it in the description down below. And you can get free, you can, you can join a giveaway for free, um, which I run every month for Steam Keys. So hopefully there's a game on um, that I will be giving away that you'll, you'll want to, um, to win. And yeah, it's just a great server to talk about simulation games and talk to me and maybe recommend me things to try in the future. another station. Yeah, see, here we go. Here are the gates. Here are the gates. Right? So these gates open as you, um, oh, I hear a beeping noise. 
Um, these gates open as you as the train approaches, and then you can get on safely. So yeah, the detail here is cool. We've got a shop down there. We've got uh, the vet, you know, vending machines that are so popular and widespread in Japan. Oh, I'm being I'm being dragged along by the train. So goodbye station. I don't I, I didn't wasn't able to find out what name of the station that was. And now the whole map is loading. Uh oh. Oh, that's weird. Okay, there we go. So yeah, you can only like hold back about two kilometers from the train before the, the camera starts getting dragged along. But we have been able to maintain 320 kilometers per hour, which is what? How much is 320 kilometers per hour in miles per hour? I think about 180. One, t about 200. Nearly 200 miles per hour. Which is cool. And you can imagine that Japanese airlines, all Nippon airlines, compete with these because you have to spend an hour at each end at an airport, don't you? Um, doing the check-in and security. Whereas the train, you just get on, you arrive right in the centre of a town instead of half the way out of the city because you're at the airport. So they really do, despite the fact they go half the speed, um, they're still very efficient. And cheap, actually. And, J and J JR, Japanese Rail, I think they're called. Yeah, they they own like pretty much all the train services in Japan. And they're not, they're sort of, I don't think they're nationalised. It's a very complex system. Like they are actually a private company, but they have the sole rights to most of the train lines in Japan or something like that. I think there's like government control over aspects of it, but they are a private company. It's interesting what we're coming up to here. Are we going over a river, maybe? Yeah, we are. A big river. Look at this. I don't know the na I don't know the names of any Japanese rivers. Um. But yeah, that's cool. And there's a road down there with one car on it. Oh, look at this. There is quite a good variety in the different houses here, um, which is nice. It's not just the same house pasted over and over again like you see in some of the UK maps in this game. And it looks like we're coming through a city now. Look at that over there. It's like, it's like a factory, I guess. Yeah, look at that. Strange looking building. Oh. See, that's not very detailed there, but I don't think you'd really see that very often. Anyway, here we are at the station. Have a quick look around. Kitakami. More vending machines. It's well detailed. And they've got custom people walking around. And these kind of beeping noises, which I don't really know what that means. But it's something to do with, like, train station announcements. Oh, milk factory. So there you go. That's a milk factory. Or oh, that's the name of a brand. I don't really know. I like seeing the like custom adverts they put in these um, modded maps. I shouldn't say modded, it's third party add-on. So yeah, as we come up to the final stop, I've only driven this route in one direction so far, so I, I can't really tell you what I'd think overall, but um, first impressions are brilliant. It's quite good value for a route. Um, I'm definitely enjoying it. And the novelty of having, finally, a Shinkansen bullet train. Oh, it's brilliant. And this is such a cool one as well, one of the newest. I think even the, new one, the newer ones are even more streamlined, because that looks, that looks so like a bullet, doesn't it? Apart from that hump there, it's so elongated and like streamlined, it's cool. Here we go, another mountain to to go through. So we've got desk lights. There you go. The desk light is shift N. What? It's like a desk light for that and that. I don't really see the point of that. Let's get some more power going up a hill. Come on. 
Oh, we're going to be there in no time. So yeah, what do you think of the route? Are you going to get it um, from Just Trains? Let me know if you have the route and um, give me like your thoughts in the comments down below. Your feedback really drives what I do on this channel. And since the Eurostar and Eurotunnel videos were quite popular, I thought it would be brilliant to come back to Train Sim. I had a look at Just Trains and here was this route. I thought, yep, yeah, got to look at this. So we're right on the limit for most of this journey. Another cool station. It's quite remote, actually, but still pretty cool. And in general, Just Trains routes have been pretty detailed, sometimes more detailed than the um, real world ones. But I actually think that Just Trains do fictional routes best, like the Valley, Co Valley Corridor one. There's another route as well which was fictional that I know that myself included um, really enjoyed and lots of other people in enjoyed. Um, I will have a look for it just while we are finishing this journey off. I don't know how I don't know how I'd find it. I just have to look through the Just Trains website. There you go. It's called Marsdenshire, which is an interesting map, and that's another fictional British route. And Just Trains have made a couple of um, Japanese routes in the past, but they're, again, they're, they're not quite as interesting as this because I don't have the bullet trains, which I think are the real big. Um, would could be the most popular things to do with Japanese trains right and then in the original Microsoft train sim there was like a, a slow route where they would been like a big storm and you had to drive around and I don't know they were like picking up a big tree from the line stuff like that and the bridge had been collapsed it was really really weird or was it an earthquake actually I think it was an earthquake um, so yeah that was a cool mission but uh, this has brought us an amazing bullet train. I know I've kept saying this, but wow, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I will try and keep a lookout for more routes similar to this. But in general, I don't, I, I said this before, I, but I've come back to it, but I don't think I'm going to be playing too much of this game in the future. It really does feel old now. This, this route and the Eurotunnel may be an exception because there's something new, something a bit different. So we're coming into the last 20 kilometers. Very soon we'll be slowing down. And Morioka, well, let's have a look at Morioka online. Is it a big city? Morioka. Uh, 300,000 people. So Sendai is going to be a lot bigger than that. Because Sendai is one of the major cities in Japan, I believe. Yeah, 1 million people. Which is nothing compared to Tokyo, which is like 50 million, isn't it? But up, up the east coast of Japan, for a lot of it, it's just all city. Constant city. You spend such a long time driving and on the train, and you, you're just still in the city. Um, at some point, Tokyo does turn into other cities. Like, I wouldn't know, but Kyoto and Tokyo are almost connected by other cities. Like, it's, it's really close. If you look at our map, it's like constant urbanised area. Or do I mean? Do I, don't, I might not mean Kyoto. No, I, I'm just looking at the map now. There's a bit. There's a bit between Tokyo and. Um, Shizuoka, which isn't connected, but then the city going all the way past Nagoya, Shiga, Kyoto, and then Osaka. Bing bong, what does that mean? I don't know, I wasn't really looking. Well, it must mean there's, there's a speed limit coming up. But the... that's a 320, so...
Oh, here we go. We must be coming into the outskirts of the city now. A suburb. And here is a slow line, I think. Or part of it, yep. Not sure you can actually drive down there, but still. Does look cool. Look at this. Uh, graduated self lap. The train is slowing down. Why is it slowing down? The emergency brake has just activated. I've just... Aha! Right, 160. Go, 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 go. No, not emergency. Self lap, self lap. I think that might actually help that we're on emergency now. There you go. Slowing down to 160. Here we go. I think we slowed down in time. A bit more. There we go. Yay, we did it. That's a good noise. You gotta love the Japanese kind of like sound effects. Like all train stations in Tokyo have a have a sound effect. Um like a a little tune, a little ditty. <laughs> so um you can kind of recognize the station from the name that gets read out to you and the, and the sound and, 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 the, and the music, which is just a little detail that is quite cool. And you kind of learn the tune of the train station. Um, here we go. We're pulling in. Let's try and stop perfectly, because I don't think... Whoa, 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 the camera seems to get a bit weird sometimes because of the lag. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, we're really starting to stutter now we're getting into this city. It's a big city. Right, two kilometers away from a um, 80 kph speed limit, we'll start slowing down. bit more. Wow. We went down to about 15 FPS then. No, not emergency, for goodness sake. Hey, look at these. Look at these tall buildings. That's cool. Nice cherry blossom. So it says that the route takes place in like the 2010s. So it's not like a 2020s route, which makes sense, I suppose, because less rail traffic in the pandemic, maybe. Um... Let's just slow down even more because we are coming up to the station now. Oh, wow. Looks really good, though. Again, detailed buildings. Oh, nice looking station. We've got a train in the station to pull up next to. Yay. We are minutes and minutes early, like nearly 10 minutes early. Um, a weird looking road bridge. I don't know what that is. So yeah, a few details that you need to fill in, really, but I don't know if they will update that. Anyway, let's try and find the exact stopping point. Here we go. Let's slow down a bit more. Okay, the end of the train is near the platform now. Let's see if we can start slowing down a bit. What do these signs mean? I don't really know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, let's stop here. There's no gates on this platform. So we can just stop about here. Yay! And let's load the passengers. Now, knowing train sim, it might force us to wait for the whole time until 9.24. Which, if it does that, I might just skip time. And we'll cut to when um, we've actually finished the mission. But yeah, let's have a quick look around. The city does look quite detailed. Uh, the station itself has a lower bit as well. For the um, other bit of the line, which is the, what? 
Tohoku Main Line, which is 48 kilometers long with 12 stations that goes out this way. I will use this in another video where I have a look at the slower route on this map. Um, but yeah, the train station looks really well detailed. How do you get how do you get to it from the street? It's just here, okay. Car park. Anything in here? No. Unfortunately not. But um, you can hear there's actually like Oh whoa whoa. Welcome to Morioka. Morioka is the capital city of the Iwate Prefecture. Morioka is famous for local noodles such as jajamen, ramen, and wanko soba, uh, a type of rice cracker. Nambu Senbai is also considered a local specialty. So there you go, you actually get some information about the local specialties um, in the region. And that was uh, our first journey on the Tohoku high-speed rail and mainline route from Just Trains. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please let me know what you think of this route in the comments down below. Make sure to join my Discord server and I will see you soon for some more simulator adventures. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and check out these videos for more content. Also remember to join my Discord server from the link in the description.